how do you even review a $3,600 microphone? No, seriously, I, I, I need answers. Come on, leave, leave them in the comments so we can figure this out together. This video is brought to you by The Loop Deck Live. Stay tuned to learn how to enhance your productivity with this tiny controller. Today we're looking at Lewitt's new flagship microphone, the LCT-1040. They sent this out for review and this thing is insane. It has two different circuits that it operates in to get you different sounds. It has a bunch of controls on this massive like 10 pound brick that you can control it with. It's flexible for solo creators as well as people working in vocal booths with a separate operator or like broadcast environment. You can control multiple units with it. It's absolutely gorgeous and it sounds incredible. But I have nothing in my repertoire even close to it. So this video's about to get weird. I'm Ebozvox, the stream professor, and I have reviewed many microphones on this channel, but nothing quite like this. This is both the biggest in terms of kind of standard condenser microphone format microphones that I've reviewed, as well as the most expensive. <laughs> like I said before, this thing costs $3,600, but if you caught my unboxing over on Stream Guides, I'll have it linked below, they thought of everything. This thing shipped in a giant pelican case that looks like it could get hit by a train and still be okay. It comes with the biggest and most interesting looking shock mount I've ever seen. It's got this really clever pop filter here that's actually a dual metal mesh design. It doesn't seem to affect the audio frequencies that much, although you're getting a sample comparison here, and it just sticks on with magnets rather than sliding over the microphone like with the LCT 440 Pure they sent me. It, it, it lights up, not in terms of, like it has a light on the back here, sure, but the actual tube circuit in it lights up as it warms up and is usable, which is insane. And like I said, we got so many controls here that you may be overwhelmed when you look at it. First and foremost, we should talk about the two different circuits in it. Uh, Lewitt actually spent almost a decade kind of engineering and building up this microphone. I think it was something like seven years working on this microphone to be their new, you know, top end kind of flagship mic for singing, for voiceover, for studio work. And it, it sounds incredible, but it's got something really interesting going on in that it is effectively kind of two different types of microphones in one. It's got a FET circuit, which is kind of a standard condenser circuit that you'd have accessing the capsule in the first place. And then you have a tube circuit in it. And I haven't looked at a whole lot of tube microphones in my career. This is kind of new territory for me, but they are kind of more analog and old school. And so they actually always pretty much require a separate power supply, like the big chunky boy we got here, because it's just a completely different means of circuit. And the circuit, the tube inside of it is amazing looking. Just getting that little window to look at it is just so cool. It has this big old long multi-pin cable here. I thought it was going to be one of those like combo like dual XLR jacks or something. According to Mike Delgadio over at Booth Junkies, this is actually a proprietary cable, uh, which kind of sucks. It has like a Limo style connector, but uh, supposedly it's a proprietary cable. So if you're if you're building out like a professional setup for this or something that multiple people are going to use, you probably want to try to get multiple cables from Lewitt because if this breaks, you can't pick one up from B&H or anything like that and ship it to you fast or go to a store or whatever. And then you have the control surface. So it has those two circuits and you can actually use them both at the same time. So on the back of the device, you have a bunch of different inputs and outputs. you got the Limo style connector for the microphone and then you've got three, well, technically four different XLR ports going on here. Two are audio outputs. One is FET and then one is the mix. So you can actually mix between the FET and the tube, but you can have one that's dedicated that's always FET. So if you're playing around, say, in a vocal booth or with your own voiceovers for gigs or even, you know, normal recordings, and you're playing around with the different tube styles and you decide you don't like it, but you don't want to throw away your take since this isn't like a software processing plugin, you have the ability to basically always have a clean feed or always have that clean feed monitoring to the talent so that this doesn't kind of mess with how they think they sound you got some stuff going on. So you got both the mix between, because you can mix, do like a wet dry mix between the tube and the FET circuit, which we'll talk about in a moment. Wet dry mix is basically just, you know, an A-B mix between the two different things. Uh, so you got both of those out simultaneously. And then the third XLR port runs to this control dock here because this is actually a detachable surface as I discovered during my unboxing. And so you can just hook up a standard XLR connection to run the remote box separately. So the power supply is the bottom half of this box, and then the remote controller is the top half of this box. It has a button in the front that will lift it off, and then if you connect it through XLR, you can control it. And as I mentioned before, you can actually control multiple microphones 
uh, just with standard XLR splitters with this one remote controller, which is really fascinating. Obviously, you're only controlling 1040s, but if you got a stereo pair or you've got like a multi-person recording setup, if you want them to, you know, be configured the same, you can do that, which is pretty cool. Now, being able to separate it is actually pretty important because most of the weight is in the power supply portion on the bottom. So music stands, any sort of mounting situation you're going to try to go with, or just even like a reasonable desk, like this takes up a ton of space. The weight is going to be a problem. So you can literally just drop this on the floor and not think about it because it's a, built like a tank. It's not going anywhere or even use it as a weight for something maybe. Uh, and then have the remote control kind of movable wherever you need it. Or like I mentioned before, you can just run it out, say, you got the power supply directly hooked up to the microphone, and then you run the remote controller outside of a vocal booth or a, a podcast little room or a production studio to where someone controlling in the control room is doing all the configuring here, which is really cool. And I really appreciate that as someone who likes kind of learning about and encouraging multi-person setups and things like that. So as I mentioned, the tube circuit and the FET circuit are going to sound a little different when they're left on their own, especially through YouTube, like realistically, you're not you're, you're not going to hear a huge difference. But for, for example, right now we are completely on tube. We are on the clear preset as so far that seems to sound the best with my voice. I'm still kind of working through testing them all clearly. But if I dial it over to the FET circuit now, now we are at 100% on the FET circuit, which is more of the standard, like if you bought a normal condenser microphone today, this is the kind of circuit that it would run with. So you've got both the kind of analog warmth vibes that you can get from it, as well as the standard just electrical kind of condenser microphone setup that you can run with. But what's really cool is, again, if you're using the mix XLR output, you can run in between. So I can literally, as I'm talking, start, you know, transitioning it over towards the tube circuit and you can get a little bit of that warmth or that analog kind of saturation or juice. You know, these are all stupid subjective terms. It, it, it sounds a little different depending on who you are. You can get a little bit of that into your voice without sacrificing the cleanness of it at the same time. So we're at about 50% of each right now. And then I can transition it all the way back over to tube, which is really nice. You've also got controls over basically some kind of different presets of interpreting that tube sound. So as I mentioned, I'm on the clear preset. For my voice, for the weird frequencies we're discovering my voice operates at, the clear circuit seems to be the best. I've done a couple videos with it now, including a recent tutorial, the shadow play short that I just did, things like that. Clear on my voice sounds incredible. Like I want to do all of my videos like this if it wasn't so massive. Uh, I would do that right now. We've also got warm, so I'm going to switch that over to that now. Actually, we'll get we'll get kind of a baseline sample for you. So I don't want to get too repetitive with the mic test that we're going to record later. So I'm just going to say, check out my glitch art Patreon at patreon.com slash glitch art if you want to support my more artistic endeavors. Check out my glitch art Patreon over at patreon.com slash glitch art to support my more artistic endeavors. Check out my glitch art Patreon at patreon.com slash glitch art to support my more artistic endeavors. Check out my glitch art Patreon at patreon.com slash glitch art to support my artistic endeavors. I forgot a word there. So we have transitioned through from clear to warm to dark and we're currently on saturated which does have a little bit more of like a mids kind of low mids you know emphasis but sounds pretty cool warm i think made me sound too boomy if i switch to that real quick warm is what i think i want to sound like or i think that my voice is lacking if ever you know whenever i think about it conceptually and i guess that's not the case because when i put pretty much any microphone that comes with a preset like this on warm i think i end up sounding a little too muddy like i i originally started with my my original testing of this microphone on warm and i was kind of disappointed with how it sounds i was like wait a minute that doesn't sound as spectacular or amazing as i was expecting this is why we push it over to dark we lose a little bit of that kind of top end clarity but we get more of that kind of classic almost like ribbon mic kind of sound i guess uh again I think clear followed by saturated are my favorites. So we're back here up on clear now. But we still have three more dials we can mess with here. The first two are pretty basic that we don't even really need to experiment with here. Uh, the first one over on the right here is attenuation. And these are just pads. So you can reduce your incoming level by 6 dB, 12 dB, and 24 dB for super loud environments. If you're doing like a shouting session or, you know, like screaming for video game sound effects or general sound effects works, that kind of stuff. I'm not even going to mess with that because literally all it does is make you quieter. You've also got uh, high pass filters. So you, I have it on linear right now, which means it doesn't roll anything off. But then you've got a 40 hertz roll off, a 80, no. Yeah, an 80 hertz roll off and then 120 hertz roll off. So if I switch it over to 40 hertz roll off, you're probably not going to hear anything too different. Uh, 
I, I, nothing usable for the human voice is at 40 hertz, but if you want the raw signal, you could leave it on linear. 80 hertz starts to cut into, which is what we're at now, starts to cut into some of the actual kind of a low end of a human voice, but it can still help reduce that boominess, that extra you know punch that activates your subwoofer or whatever that may make your audio sound a little undesirable. And then 120 hertz really, like I, I boost the 120 hertz range sometimes with my EQ as that is where a lot of my warmth of my voice naturally lives, and a lot of microphones don't recreate that. So I'd only really use this if you just 100% don't need any bass or don't want any bass, or you're going for that more cassette tape kind of sound, or if you've got something really rumbly in the background that you really need to cut out, which would be unfortunate, but you have the option here. Let's go back to linear. The last dial, the second big one here, is really fascinating. You have a bunch of different pickup patterns with this microphone. I, I didn't expect that. You can transition all the way from omnidirectional to wide cardioid to normal cardioid to hyper cardioid down to figure eight. So you can have people talking on both sides of the microphone for a two person kind of thing, and I guess an ASMR kind of thing, or you know, whatever, and as well as omnidirectional to where you don't have to be right up on top of the microphone. This is fascinating, and you get steps in between them. So right now we're just, you know, 12 o'clock normal cardioid mode, but I can transition it here. I can transition it here over to wide cardioid mode. Now this has a little operational light with some of the changes you make to it. It takes a second to kind of update and process and you gotta wait on the operational light for it to fully work. Uh, but here we have wide cardioid mode. So I will say I've done most of my kind of testing and experimenting in the normal cardioid mode and I have been incredibly impressed for a standard condenser microphone like this which typically picks up a lot of my room sound. I do not have, like I have Sound treatment, and you know, I try to have a fairly tre treated space, but I don't have a quiet environment. I've got PC fans, I've got lots of stuff. I've got like a network attached storage thing next to me that produces noise. I've got noise you can pick up, and this thing surprisingly picks up less background or ambient sound than some of the dynamic mics I've used when it's in the cardioid or hypercardioid modes, which has been really interesting. Now, this is wide cardioid, which means you have a little bit more flexibility for moving around. We'll do a comparison of this in a moment, but it also might mean you get a little bit more proximity effect. We're going to go all the way over to omnidirectional. All right, now we're on omnidirectional, which is going to lose kind of some of the sound characteristics of the microphone, but it gives you the cleanest kind of sound stage of movement to move around the microphone and start talking in different directions and get picked up in different places and not, you know, not be colored too much compared to your position. Like it's going to be a little bit of coloration compared to the standard cardioid format, but compared to like where you're sitting, theoretically it shouldn't sound a whole lot. And we might still get a little bit of proximity effect, but probably not a ton. Uh, but then, but again, you can get individual, like you have three notches in between each setting, which is pretty crazy. So we're gonna go back to cardioid. All right, now we're back in the normal cardioid mode. So I can get right up on the microphone and then start talking around it. As you can see, as I start to fall off, as we get to different parts of the microphone, you start to lose a little bit more of my voice. Now we're gonna go to hypercardioid. All right, now we're in hypercardioid mode, which means that we should lose even more sound as we start moving away from the front of the capsule, lose a little bit more of the clarity of the levels, yada yada, should start affecting my voice a lot more versus being right up on the capsule. But then we're gonna go to figure eight. All right, now we're on figure eight, which means even at the back of the microphone, I should be getting picked up fairly evenly. Of course, you're not getting an actual stereo output regardless. They're, you know, even with the FET and the tube, you're not getting any sort of stereo output. So ASMR is not necessarily the best solution for the figure eight here, but you do get, you know, pickup on both sides of the microphone while still rejecting the actual, you know, sides where you're not looking at the capsule itself, which is, I guess, kind of neat. Personally, I would be on cardioid or hypercardioid for most of this. I like the Plano cardioid myself. You also have one more feature here at least on the front of this, which is the default versus reverse polarity. You actually can talk into either side of the capsule using this mode, which is functionally probably not super useful, but it does give you the option to mount it in either direction. Either you're facing the window with the tube glowing up or you are facing the logo, which does have a slight subtle LED on it that you can actually turn off using the button on the back here. It has a full sleep mode for the whole thing, or if you just tap it once, it turns off that LED. I don't think you're going to really see a difference with my bright studio lights on, but you have that option available to you. I kind of forgot to mention when I was going through the physical stuff, on top of all the physical innovations with the controls and everything that makes this microphone pretty cool, the shock mount itself, instead of having the screw mount system that the LCT440 Pure has, which frankly, 
has not been reliable for me whatsoever. This has a clamp system, so... You just drop it in there and then clamp it in. And that's what applies the pressure. And the same thing for the angle adjustment. Just has that little clamping system right there that allows you to get the exact angle that you want and then just applies, you know, pressure to hold it in place. And this is the the, the best shock mount mic mount ecosystem I have ever seen and I absolutely love it. Just for thoroughness sake, uh, I'm going to include some of my usual microphone comparisons here to some other microphones. I'm not even going to say similar because again, I don't own or have access to anything in this price point. I don't have a U87 or a TLM 103 or anything like that. The most expensive microphone I own prior to this is the Sennheiser MKH 416 shotgun mic and that's a thousand bucks and it's a shotgun mic. So while it is used in voiceover booths and things like that because of its qualities, it's not even an entirely an apples to apples comparison, but we're going to include some comparisons. And one mic I am going to include that is kind of out there is the Aston Stealth mic. It's actually more kind of targeted as a, almost like a dynamic mic, uh, but it has those different what they call voices, which is kind of like the dark, warm, saturated kind of profiles. So I'm going to include that in its own little section here as well. Thanks to our sponsor, Loop Deck. The Loop Deck Live helps you tackle your streaming, production, or general getting stuff done workflow effortlessly. 12 custom function buttons with the screen behind them, 7 programmable buttons, 6 tactile dials with button presses within them. The Loop Deck Live gives you powerful, precise control over your workflow. Between general PC control and macros to dynamic application profiles with integrations for all sorts of programs, including Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, Lightroom, and Premiere, vMix, DaVinci Resolve, and OBS Studio, of course, to the custom workspaces that combine all the tools you need. This tiny little keypad will rock your productivity world with fast access to all your necessary tools and unlimited customization. Get your hands on one today at the link in the video description. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Oven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Oven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Oven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. This is talking while typing on box royal switches, talking while typing, tippity tip tap, tip tip tap, and clicking. Talking while typing, talking while typing on box royal switches, tippity tap, and click. This is a talking while typing test, talking while typing on box royal switches, talking while clicking, clicking, talking, tippity, tip, 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 tip. Talking while typing on box royal switches, talking while typing. Clickety, click, 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 click. Talking while typing test, talking on box royal switches, talking while typing. And clickety, click, 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 click. Talking while typing, talking while typing on box royal switches. Talking while clickety click 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 clacking. All right, and for this last bit of comparison, we're comparing the 
LCT-1040 to the Aston Stealth, which is a dynamic microphone, but it has a few different voices that are designed to kind of emulate some of those tube-sounding circuits, I guess. Uh, so this is currently on the V1 voice, and I'm just going to cycle through the voices as we do part of the read and compare it to the different tones in the LCT-1040. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their Halls of Stone. Seven for the Dwarf Lords in their Halls of Stone. Nine for the Mortal Men, doomed to die. Nine for the Mortal Men, doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. All right, and that brings us to conclusion time, where I usually answer the question, should you buy this microphone? What? <laughs> I, I, this is one of the few times in my career I've kind of gotten imposter syndrome when reviewing a product because realistically, with, with the bulk of my audience, at least that traditionally watches my videos, the answer would be no because you don't have the budget for it and it doesn't make sense in a streaming environment. I did mention in the cardioid and hypercardioid modes, I have been brilliantly impressed with how it responds to the background ambient sound that I have. Not only in terms of like computer fan noise and say if I start typing right now, tippity tippity tip on box royals, box royal switches and clicking, like it's still going to pick up some because it is a condenser mic, but it uh, compared to some of the mics I've been using, it rejects a ton. But I don't know that it makes sense for streamers necessarily, and that's not really who it's built or targeted for either. However, I will say the response to my Earthworks Icon and Ethos videos the people that the video has reached in terms of the voiceover space, the the higher level broadcast and production space and all of that has been insane. And so I will say that there are people who watch my videos who probably would be interested in buying this microphone because they're setting up a voiceover booth or they're wanting, you know, a multi-person setup where they can pass on these kinds of controls over to the control room and things like that. I can't if I'm being transparent and honest here, I cannot provide any sort of valid like price analysis or is it worth it for the money kind of thing because I don't have anything to compare it to. But I will say if you're in those kinds of scenarios or you are just the highest class baller that is looking at the you know people who have TLM 103s or whatever and you're kind of like, I want the best sounding microphone on my YouTube video or live stream or podcast absolutely possible and I will do what I need to in terms of sound treatment and having it on camera because this is not an off-camera microphone sure go for it this thing is incredible I hope I get to use it for more content because it makes me sound incredible but you know for the people watching my videos being mad that the beacon mic is 270 bucks then you're probably not buying this shouts out to Lewitt for making an incredible piece of audio gear. This thing is awesome. Hope you enjoyed this kind of review since, you know, like I said, I can't really provide honest price analysis of it, but this has been a wonderful experience from the from the every little detail in the unboxing to, you know, hearing my voice on such an incredible piece of artistry, I guess. <laughs> Hit the like button if you enjoyed. If you're looking for other videos to watch, consider checking out this video on my forever microphone in terms of my at desk kind of video shooting, although this could be my forever microphone in terms of raw voiceover, or if you're interested in the Beacon mic, something more targeted at live streamers for significantly less, but a completely different sound signature, check out that video as well. Remember, be kind, rewind.